Hello friend, welcome back. We are back in the seed growing room and it has been over a week since I've been in here with the crazy winter storm, having no water. I did as much as I could do and then I needed to walk away. I guess what I did when you weren't with me is I did a second coat of paint on the trim and then I did my first coat of paint on this door and that already looks a lot better. I'll show you to remind you what this looked like before. And then, oh, I should turn the lights on. And then I talked to Josh and we were deciding if we were going to paint this door. Oh, don't want the fan on, ouch. I need to move this. I've walked into this way too many times. But we were talking if we were gonna paint this door or not. And I decided that yes, we're gonna paint this door. So my dad is on his way over here right now to help me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and see if we can finish this out. We don't have that much more to do. I think the hard part is done, but I do need to, it's very cold in here, get the space heater plugged in and turned on. Get this turned on, move this kind of away from the drop cloth. So this right here is the trim paint, I believe. I have to reacclimate myself extra white. Uh, I need a high gloss, semi high gloss. So this is the door and trim paint. And I've got a brush here that I never washed and it's still soft so I can go ahead and use this. I'm gonna reuse this cup because it's completely dry now so I don't need to worry about paint flecks coming off of it. And I'm gonna pour this into here. So we're gonna get the color on the wall today, finish the trim, and then I need to talk to Josh to see if we're gonna rip out the flooring today before we start bringing in the grow trays, grow trays, grow racks, but time will tell on that. For now, let's just get the paint on the door and walls. I'm gonna start with this door so that it can dry and we can get a second coat on and then I'll go and do the second coat on the other door. I do have bread in my oven and I have my oven pre, or not my oven, I have my phone timer on and that's gonna ring in just a minute. I'm so glad I decided to paint the trim and doors. This is just a typical project where when you get into it, I was not planning to paint the trim and doors, but they were looking so dingy once I had the primer on the walls and the nice stark white that the trim and doors definitely needed it. And I'm really glad I decided. I had asked you all if I should paint this door. I was gonna paint the other one and I was kind of on the fence whether I should paint this one. And of course you all said, yes, you should paint both doors. And I think you all were right. So I went ahead and we're getting it done. So we're gonna get the first coat on here and then we will. Oh. That's my timer for the bread. Let it dry and get a second coat on here. So I'm trying to do a thin coat on this. This this door doesn't have much texture to it. And so I was thinking that I didn't want as many brush strokes in it. So if I could do a couple thin coats, it would go on a little bit better. This is the first time I've painted a door like this. And after I painted it, I was thinking, uh, I probably should have primed it first. The other door that I painted was pre-primed, I believe. And this one, after painting it, I was like, I don't know if it is pre-primed. But so far, it's holding up great. It looks great. I have a lot of paint. So if it does chip a little bit, I can touch it up as time goes on. That looks a lot better. Definitely needs a second coat, but we're going to be happy with the first coat. My dad just got here and I think, well, since I'm working on the trim and the doors, I guess the doors, I've already done the trim. My dad can start working on the color and the color is Sherwin-Williams Glossomer Veil, which is kind of like a warm gray. It's a warm tone, just very, very neutral. I want the seedlings, when they start growing, to really pop. I don't really want a color on the wall because I don't want it to be distracting to the seedlings. So this is a very, very neutral color. And this is what, I probably should stir this because this is the color as opposed to white. Let's see. Could 
probably just use a stir stick that I used before because it would be dry. Got one right here. I'll use this end. Oh yeah, this is gonna look good, I think. This will have some contrast to the white trim. So I just have another red Solo cup for my dad. Got a ooh, paintbrush here. This in here. Hopefully one gallon is enough. Hey dad. Hey. Would you rather would I rather cut in the color starting around cutting in or do you want to paint that door white with the second coat to start? Mm, paint the store white with okay. the second coat. Okay. So I'll start cutting in then. Okay. So I've already painted around the black area. I have not taken a scraper to scrape the excess that got on the glass. But my dad, if you want to take this, yep. he's going to go ahead and get going on just this door needs a second coat. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to. Is this the final coat on this door? Is that what we're thinking? If it covers well, then yeah, we don't need to do another yeah. coat. But if it, if we need to cover it one yeah, more time, we'll we can. So I think what I'm going to do is just start maybe at this window and just work my way around in a circle. And I'm just going to start cutting in with the color. At first, I wasn't sure if this was going to have much of a contrast, but I think that contrast is pretty good. Take a look at it. Oh, yeah, that's going to be nice. Just right. Yeah. Just right. I wanted, I didn't want anything that was going to distract from the seedlings. Yeah, that's, I think that's neutral enough. This is the same color that's in my kitchen and the rest of the house if you were with me when we painted the living room and the kitchen but it definitely looks a little bit darker out here i think it's because actually i don't know i don't know if it's because i'm painting on drywall and not texture or if it's because there's so much natural light in this room i don't know i just know that i'm super happy with the color i think it's beautiful it's a nice neutral color and like i said i really want my seedlings to pop i would have loved to do green green is my absolute favorite color if you were with me when i painted our powder bathroom i painted it this super super deep rich beautiful green color but and that was what i was thinking because so many of you guys had recommended green and then i was thinking you know it might clash a little bit with the seedlings because my goal is to hopefully have beautiful vibrant healthy green seedlings and i don't want the wall color to be competing with them so i don't know if that makes sense but that's kind of what my thinking was when it came to this paint color and another reason why i didn't want to do like a pink or a purple because i love those colors as well is i was just trying to think of what could be neutral and let my seedlings speak for themselves so that is what I was thinking. So here my dad finished doing the second coat of paint on the door and I still need to scrape around the glass, but I'll do that later. And that's what really is gonna make it pop. I kinda wanna wait to do that toward the end so that it's gonna just clean it up and look really nicely at the end. And so now he's coming in and he's gonna start cutting in with the wall color as well and then we're just working together. So his goal was to start right where I started, but I'm working counterclockwise around the room and he's gonna work clockwise around the room and then we'll end up meeting in the middle and then we can move on to the next step. So the areas above the windows and doors, we decided to just go ahead and paint it in with the paintbrush just so that we're not using the roller in that really small space because typically that's when I have had the worst luck kind of putting my rail roller up onto the ceiling. So that's why we did go ahead and paint the color in above the window and the door. My dad has such an eye for detail and he is gonna go ahead and fill those holes in just so that when we paint over it, it looks a little bit better. So these shelves are kind of in the way. I didn't even really notice them when I was painting white. Here, let me move these shelves and then I can show you. I'm gonna to need to move these shelves anyway for my dad to be able to get around here. 
So this is kind of a good time to do it. Oh yeah, that's gonna look way better, Dad. Let's move this. Yeah. If we're already going through the effort of painting, might as well take the extra five minutes to do this. Okay, now you'll really be able to see what he's filling in. So those little dots right there, those were showing up pretty well when he was painting. So they go all along where that, I think that's duct work. Right there. Friend, I am so excited to announce that my seeds have all come except for one company. I ordered from four companies this year and I'm still waiting for one of them to come. A few of them got delayed due to the weather. And so I am waiting for that fourth bag to come and then I will share with you all the seeds I got this year and then we will be starting seeds soon, which is so exciting. <laughs> It went from crazy cold temperatures to it was in the 60s the last couple days and it feels like spring and so I feel like I am ready to get into garden season even though I know that we can get snow in February very easily <laughs> but I'm just really excited. So I'm going to keep going and cutting in around the ceiling and then I will cut in around all these shelves and the beadboard or not beadboard whatever that board is called, and we're just gonna keep painting until we get all the cutting in done. So my dad has gotten all the way around there. I have gotten all around this way. Here, all the way around, and I have made it to here. So I've got still to cut into here and this back wall back here. But my dad is going to start using the roller in just a minute as soon as he just finishes this one wall. And then I'll keep cutting in and then he's gonna start rolling this area and start working towards me. So he's gonna go around the other way. I'm pretty sure I have enough paint for one coat on this whole room. You know, probably I have enough for two. Cause I, how much paint do you have in? Oh shoot. How much paint dad do you have in your cup? Oh, just a minute. Little bit? Okay. There's really not that much rolling that needs to be done. So we're gonna get the paint and then I've got a roller for my dad. Okay, this is ready for you when you're ready. The hard work of painting is the cutting in, and then once you do that painstaking work of cutting in, you get the satisfaction of rolling, and you're gonna see how quickly it goes once you can start rolling and getting paint on the walls that way. So I'm just gonna keep cutting in, my dad's gonna start rolling, and I wanted to let you know that not only have almost all my seeds arrived, but my compost that I like to start my seedlings in have arrived, and I can link down below my seed starting equipment and where I purchased my seeds from this year. I purchased them from four different companies and there's definitely reasons why I like to purchase my seeds from multiple different areas. And this year we're gonna be growing a ton of really fun and exciting things I've never grown before. So it's gonna be a fun garden season. But my compost has arrived so as soon as the rest of my seeds come, we're gonna start growing seeds indoors. And a question I get asked all the time is when should I start my seeds indoors? When should I transplant my seedlings outdoors? When should I direct sow seedlings? And that is a question that is so regionally based that what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna link down a resource that I use every year that helps me know when I should be starting my seeds indoors, when I should be transplanting my seedlings outdoors, and when I should be direct sowing seeds. Because even from my last homestead to this homestead, my planting conditions are different and my calendar of when I should be doing things is different. Because we all live in such different climates and regions of the country, the best thing to do is put in your zip code into the Farmer's Almanac, that's the website I'm gonna link for you down below, and go based off their planting guides, or even better yet, if you know someone who gardens close to you, 
talk to them and ask them or go to garden centers and talk to them and ask them because they are going to give you the best advice. And so that is what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going based on my previous year's experience and the Farmer's Almanac. It is a free resource that is very, very helpful. One thing that in the garden community you'll hear a lot talked about is garden growing zones and the growing zones all just changed in the U.S. recently. But what a growing zone indicates is how cold and how hot your area gets. That's kind of the only information it gives. And so if you have a plant that's a perennial, like a rhubarb plant, apple, blueberry, things, plants that come back year after year after year, Growing zone is important because a lot of those plants can only survive a certain cold temperature. And so you need to know how cold your area gets so that when you put that plant out in the garden, if it gets below a certain temperature, you don't want it to die if you live in a very cold climate. But what it doesn't really talk about for annual plants, plants that you need to plant every year, like tomatoes and peppers and a lot of the garden produce that we like to grow in gardens, It doesn't talk about when your last frost date is and when your first frost date is. And when we're talking about starting seeds indoors, that is the more important information for us. And everyone's frost date is different. My frost date at this homestead is different than it was at my last homestead. And so that is why the Farmer's Albanac can be a very, very good resource because it'll give you your average first and last frost date. And so I will link that down below for you if you are interested in that information. And that's also important for if you go and purchase your seedlings at a greenhouse, you wanna make sure that you're planting those tomato and pepper plants out after your last frost date. We are almost done cutting in. I am really happy to be almost done with this part. I just have to do this little section and around this door and then the cutting in is done. Greenhouses will sell plants that are cold tender before the average last frost date in the area because people will buy them. And so it's important, even if you're gonna be purchasing your seedlings, that you look up that information so that you don't purchase a pepper plant, put it out into your garden, and then it get too cold and then it not survive. So, there's nothing, they're not doing anything wrong by doing that because, you know, different people have greenhouses and there's different, you know, like my frost date at my homestead is about two weeks later than my last homestead, even though I still shop at the same box stores that I did at my previous homestead. And so they are just expecting the gardener to know that information. And so by looking that up, that can save you a little bit of headache if you purchase a plant before your last frost date and you want to put it out into your garden. It's kind of funny. We literally just ran out of paint for rolling and my dad was able to get the rolling done. So he's going to start on the third coat of paint on the door and I'm starting to cut in for the second time. You can see we are right where we started and then we obviously need another gallon of paint. So Josh was in town. So when he comes, when he comes back from town, I put an order in so he can pick up a gallon of paint so we can finish this out. Cause this is going to take probably one and a half gallons to get this whole area done. It's soaking up paint. I think more just because the walls were never textured. They are, were just primed. So making progress. My dad is rolling the very last area and we got one or two coats. We got two coats on everything. We got three coats on this store. So that is way more than I thought we were going to get done. I cannot believe it. There's no way I would have been able to get this much done by myself. I think when you have someone help you, you can get more than just twice as much. I feel like it's exponential. The only area where I guess we need to paint more is here. I need to put two coats up there, but where my dad spackled, it wasn't quite dry. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow. 
and then I'm gonna scrape this area tomorrow and then I can start cleaning up. I'm not gonna get to that tonight because I've got a lot to clean up. So I'm gonna give this time to dry and then I can come back, clean it up and we can start putting the things back in here that go in here so that it can look really good. I did turn the space heater back on. I, we had turned it off when we were working and it had gotten a little bit warm, but now I'm gonna turn it on just so that everything can dry and cure properly. I'll turn it off before we go to bed. I'll set an alarm on my phone, but very, very, very happy with how it's looking. I think it looks so much better. And it took me one entire day to prime the ceilings and the wall. It took me an entire day to paint the trim and the ceiling one coat, and then another day, not an entire day, but took me another hour or so to do the second coat on the trim. So the fact that we got two coats on this whole room, pretty excited about that. So thank you, Dad, for coming and helping. Grateful, blessings. Welcome back, friend. We are on day four of this painting project and beautification of the seed growing room. Now it's been quite a few days since I was in here last, but I think we're gonna get all the painting done today. I need to do a second coat on this door, which I almost forgot about. My dad had put some putty along the edge there and that needs to be sanded and so that I can paint that. Once I paint this little section and that door, all the painting is done. And then we can start cleaning and actually bringing stuff back in and getting this area organized. Josh is actually at the home improvement store looking for possibly replacing my seed growing shelves. Now I can paint it. The reason Josh is looking for new shelves, possibly for the seed growing room it, or adapting the shelves I already have is to find ones with wheels. So when you grow seeds or starts indoors, you are growing them in this perfect controlled environment and you need to do what's called hardening them off. So you need to bring them before you put them outside in the harsh sun, wind and weather. For a week or two before you plant them out, you need to bring them outside. Well, I have so many trays. It can take me an hour a day bringing the seeds in and outside because usually when you're doing that, the outside temperatures are not warm enough to leave them outside and that can take me quite some time. So Josh had this brilliant thought, if he could either adapt the shelves I already have or find shelves with wheels, then I could take my shelves and I could wheel them right out that door because that's where I normally take them and I have them sit on my patio. But instead of carrying one shelf at a time, I could wheel out, I don't know how many trays I have on there, probably 10. So it would just be a lot more efficient. So we'll see what he says and what he finds on his mission in town. So here I've got the paint. We're gonna do the first coat of paint on that wall. I don't know if you'd call that a wall, but I think that's some ducting on that ducting. I thought this project was gonna take me one day to do the whole thing. I was telling my dad that the other day when he was here and he oh so politely laughed at me and was like, nope, of course that's, you're not gonna get that done in one day. And I already, I'm way too close to this. I need to move the ladder. Maybe I'll start over here. So I'm, I think I'm gonna do this underneath area too. My dad and I were talking about that and we weren't sure what would be like the proper way to do it. And I think I'm just gonna use a paintbrush. I'm just putting on the last little bit of paint here. I tried to do a pretty generous coat. So hopefully that will cover it because it's kind of uncomfortable <laughs> to paint up underneath here. But that's done now, which feels great. I'm not gonna put this gray paint away yet because I might have to do a second coat. So what I'm gonna do now 
is get a second coat of this trim paint on that front door. And while Josh is at the hardware store, he's going to look at the flooring options to see if there's any affordable flooring that we could maybe put down in here as opposed to this carpet. Okay. I'm just going to use this bucket <laughs> and I'm going to paint directly out of this bucket because I don't have any more red solo cups. I'm just going to carry this over to this door. And I'm just going to, I think what I could do is probably prop this can of, let's see, is this a bad idea? I'm going to start at the top. Is that a bad idea? Hmm, it's probably a bad idea. Last thing I want is four, there's probably three gallons of paint to spill. So I think what I'm going to do to get my paint a little bit closer to me is take this paint can and set this on top. There we go. That's safer. I'm gonna start up here. One coat of paint, work my way down. It's not gonna look that much different <laughs> to you, but it might look quite a bit different to me getting a second coat on here. So let's go ahead and get that done real quick. And then we can get going on putting this room back together. In the corner there. I got the door done, so I need to get the lid back on this paint. And well, you know what? We're making it to the tail end of the actual painting, but there is one spot that I want to touch up because I dripped a little bit of wall paint on it. It's a piece of trim. And Josh bought this for me the other day. It's a razor blade that's like this. So when scraping glass, I'm not just using a razor blade by itself. This has like a whole guard, but you can see here, I dropped some wall paint. So I was thinking I could probably just take this razor blade and kind of go like that and get myself some paint. I might have to do two coats on this to cover that. Well, maybe not. Maybe I will to cover that spot up. Perfect. Now all the painting is officially done unless I need to do one more coat on that vent. So I'm gonna take this razor blade and I have to tell you this is way easier <laughs> to do than just holding a razor blade and probably a whole lot safer. I'm gonna clean up where I overpainted this black paint. And we're gonna start cleaning up and making this whole area look a whole lot better. Here's the before. And there is the official after. So now what I'm gonna do, I might be hard to see. You can see pretty easy here. I wasn't sure if all this scumminess was on the inside of the window or the outside, and you can see where I ran my hand right there. So I'm gonna get these windows clean. I'm not exactly sure where I'm gonna put the grow uh, shelves because I, in my ideal world, I would like to keep these two windows open just because I think it's pretty and the windows are pretty instead of putting a shelf right in front of it. So if Josh ends up getting new shelves, maybe we could put a shelf on here and then we could build a small one here, a tall one there, and then a small one here. I'm not exactly sure. But what I do know is I want to get these windows clean before we put anything here because there might be something that's going to go right in front of that window.
Because if I don't put shelving in front of this, it would be kind of nice to be able to open the windows. I don't think I've ever opened this window since I've lived here. So it's definitely never been cleaned. So that is looking much better. And in the time it took me to do this, I was able to assess this area up here. And I do not think I need to do a second coat. So we are officially done painting. So now commence the cleanup and put back together. Now, I just got off the phone with Josh and he said that he was able to find some casters, which is fantastic for the, the shelves I already have. So we'll see if those work. And that way we can turn the, pre the current shelves into rolling shelves. And I think we found a good option, a very affordable option to replace the floors in here to vinyl. Now that I think is a good option for a utility room like this because it's gonna be waterproof. I'm gonna be watering plants in here. I'll be tracking mud in and out. It's just a much more practical flooring in a room like this than carpet. I would just have the concrete floors, but they are really discolored and ugly because they have the glue from the carpet. So that's why we'll probably just put some vinyl down just so that it looks nice. So commence cleanup. First thing I'm gonna do is actually go wash these out. And then I'm gonna come and I have a disaster and we've got a bunch of garbage that needs to be put into a garbage bag. And we just need to start cleaning up. So let me go take care of these and we'll be back to clean up this mess that I have in here. I think the first thing I'm going to do to start clearing stuff out of here before I start bringing stuff back in. So I'm actually going to take the paint out of here and get this put back away in the garage where it goes. Then we're going to get the garbage and then tidy it up. And then we can actually start bringing things back in here but I don't want to bring anything in here till I get everything out of here that doesn't belong in here. The two most time consuming parts of painting projects are the prep work and then cleaning up and putting it back together. And so we have now, if you look at it as prep, paint, put back together, we are two thirds the way done with this project. So first, there was a lot of like tools and equipment that needed to be put away. And I thought the easiest thing that I could do to start with would be let's tackle the garbage. Garbage is easy, I know garbage. So I went through and I grabbed all the garbage and then I went through and I was putting away all the equipment. So like the drop cloth, the paint brushes, and those types of things. I really wanted to make sure that when I was done with this project, I didn't just put all of the equipment in the garage. Josh had spent days organizing the garage. So I wanted to make sure that I put all that stuff away. So once I got all that stuff put away, then it was time to start putting back the outlet covers and things back onto all the walls. And I started doing that and then I realized these are dirty. They probably had never been cleaned before. And so I figured, hey, it'd be easier to clean them before I put them on the wall. And so I just laid them all out flat, sprayed them with some cleaner, took a paper towel and scrubbed them. And once they were clean, it was pretty easy to go throughout the room and put them back where they go. So I just grabbed one or two at a time and I started putting them on the walls and on the ceiling. And then I was about to put this up on the ceiling and then I looked at it and I was like, oh my goodness, that is pretty dirty. So then I cleaned the front of it and I was about to put it on the wall again and then I saw the back and I thought, oh my goodness, that is dirty. So I went ahead and I cleaned that too. So this vent is nice and clean. And then the next thing I wanted to clean were the light covers. Those were pretty 
dusty and dirty and I did get some paint on them because I didn't take them down until after I had primed the ceiling. So I took them down, I scrubbed them and I was able to get any dust and bugs off and I was able to go ahead and get most of the paint off that I had gotten off. So now I'm gonna start putting the shelving and back up on the wall and I took the time to clean that as well because that was pretty dusty and dirty and grimy as well. So this is where I do all of my seed starting and all my trays and stuff live there. So I wanted to make sure that I put those back up because I definitely will be using those shelves in the next few weeks. And then I knew that I needed to get this counter clean because it had just become a disaster. So I went ahead and I got the counter clean and I did a pretty good job not getting paint on this counter. And then I had never cleaned inside these cupboards, so it was time to clean inside these cupboards. All right, I got that cupboard cleaned out. Originally I was thinking I'm gonna put my seeds in there, but then I remembered I put my freeze dryer right here and I can't open that cupboard. So I'm rethinking it a little bit. My thought was I could get rid of all of these wooden shelves because I really don't put anything on them. But now I'm rethinking exactly what I wanna do. So I need to think quite a bit. So it's already looking way better in here. The last thing I need to do is vacuum because there is just so much stuff on the floor. And this was here when we bought the house. Like this carpet just needs to go, plus all the paint that's on it. So I'm really excited about the prospect of getting something in here that's gonna be easier to clean and that is more practical for this type of room. You also may have noticed there's no baseboards in, in here, which is a good thing that there weren't. And then I took the time to paint them if we're gonna rip up this flooring. I got all the outlet covers back on the walls. I've cleaned everything. Everything is clean except for the need to vacuum. And so it just feels so much cleaner in here. I just turned the heater back on in here because it's starting to get cold now that the sun is going down. And who knows when we'll actually be able to get new flooring in here. We've just kind of made the decision that that's something that we want to pursue. So I'm going to, in the meantime, get it nice and tidy. We need to bring back the grow, what are they called? Shelves, my grow shelves in here. I, I feel like I need to be careful touching walls, but all these walls are dry. The only thing that's not dry is that it's probably pretty close to dry, but the front door. I'm done vacuuming, so I'm gonna put this shelf back for sure. The whole time I've been vacuuming, I've been kind of thinking about what my plan is, and I have an idea. Well, I have a plan moving forward. So let's get this over here. I'm just gonna put this one right back where it was. Well, do I want it over here or do I want it right here? Which currently, it's, I would have to move those shelves in order to make it fit. It originally was over here by this door. I don't think I wanna keep these two because I never used them before. I've got all these cupboards here where I have plenty of storage. One of them was right here. And so it was very hard to put two grow shelves there. I couldn't because of one, so I might be able to get a grow shelf here and a grow shelf there if I don't have that shelf. And then the other one was tucked in this corner. And so it was kind of awkward because I had a grow shelf here and a grow shelf here. So I'm thinking if I don't keep those two shelves, I could put one shelf here, one here, and then I could put one here and I could keep this window and this window open. Because I also have those cabinets there that I can put stuff in. And my freeze dryer is on a wheelie cart, so I can move that. 
And what I'm thinking as well, very dusty in here. <laughs> We're working on making that better, but I think this carpet is part of the problem, so I'm excited to get the carpet out. But what I'm thinking is I'm not gonna bring any of the grow light or grow shelves in here until I start planting things because if we're gonna replace the carpet, I don't wanna bring all of them in here and then move them out. Plus Josh got casters when he was in town today. So he can put casters on those shelves for me, which he can't do right now. So he could put casters on the shelves units for me and then I could just wheel them in here. But I'll wheel them in here as I need them. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. I never put anything on this before, so I don't think I really need it. So if I take it off, I don't think I'll miss it. If there is dust, let's go ahead and get. And I've decided, if you can't tell, I'm gonna put that shelf over here because I don't really want it blocking and being in the way of this door, because it kind of was. I may eventually get rid of this one too, because I could put my seeds in my black cabinet or my white cabinet. See if I can do this without <laughs> it falling over. One thing I did not do was measure first. This was eyeball measure so it might not even fit. Time will tell. Oh, I think it will. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Kind of obscures the hot water heater too right when you first come in. Yeah, I like that. I like that better. I'm gonna go ahead and get these shelves out of here because I'm pretty sure I do not want them. So we're just gonna get them out of here. These ones are a lot lighter. Oh gosh. Okay. I almost just used my backside to open this door and it could still be a little bit wet. Thankfully I didn't smudge it. All right, get these out of here. It's too tall to go through the door that way. Where there's a will, there is a way. So the only other thing I wanna bring in here is one thing for now. I do need to go out into the garage and put all my painting stuff away. I've done a relatively good job putting stuff away as I go, but I just need to get the bin back up onto the shelf with the painting stuff in it. I wanna put this away and then we are done with the painting portion of this project. So the next project is floors and figuring out what exactly the grow light and grow shelf setup is gonna be. Josh and I got this shop back when we were first married and we were remodeling our first home. We remodeled the whole thing. Every surface of our first house we updated and this was one of the first pieces of equipment we purchased and it has been a huge asset in every home we've owned. So I'm gonna go put this away, put the painting stuff away, bring in the one last thing I'm gonna bring in today. And that thing is a garbage can. This has been one of the best things I've put in here to help keep this area tidy. Let me go back and show you what this looked like before we got started. I am so happy with how it has turned out so far. We've got a little bit more work to do but the big portion of it is done. And then we get to play around with the grow light setup and get all that going. My seeds should be coming in the next day or two. They all got delayed because of the winter storm that happened in most of the country. And so they should be here soon. There are things that I could have and will be able to start when they get here, but I'm thinking we need to figure out the flooring situation before I bring everything back in here. And I will just bring things back in here as I start seeds. I'm waiting for my compost too, like my seed starting mix. And so we'll just have to wait and see. So thank you for being here as we got a ton of progress made in kind of giving this area a facelift. I think it's more cozy. It'll feel more cozy too once we have more things in here. I still need to bring my freeze dryer back in here, but it is 
finishing a run right now, and so I don't really want to move it and upset it at this point. So for now, we are calling it for the night. So if you enjoyed this, I just want to say thank you for being here. And if you're new, please consider subscribing because we do a lot of fun things around here. We spend a lot of time in the kitchen, we spend a lot of time in the garden, and we do random projects like this. So if you wanna watch more of my videos, I can pop them there. You can go enjoy between now and the next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.